Good afternoon. It's once again Friday, 5.30 in the p.m. Of course, it's a little bit cool. Well, maybe I should go a little bit further than that. It is actually cold. It is actually cold. You heard that song says, I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. And when it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. Well, I've heard it. And I know exactly what it means. But also beyond that, there's another one. Let's say, I gotta go to work. But baby, it's cold outside. My mama will be worried. But baby, it's cold out there. And so it's cold, it's cold, cold, cold. But, you know, being cold is nothing too unusual. This is Chicago. This is the city. Chicago, Illinois. Early part of January 2017. And so you would expect it to be cold. So grab yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and let's have some stimulating conversation. Well, there are a lot of things going on. As soon as you finish talking about one thing, there's something else. I am so saddened to come home and pick up the newspaper. And before I could get out of the airport, usually one of the first things that I do when I get off the airplane and get back to Chicago on a Friday or Thursday or whenever it is, I race to the newsstand because I want to see what's going on in Chicago. And on the front page of the Sun-Times, there is a photograph of four young African Americans, two boys and two girls, and they live not far from where my district office is located. And to see what they have been doing earlier this week, how they have maliciously treated an individual of another race, an individual who was uh, handicapped in some way. I don't think you can call this much other than either a hate crime or somebody hating on something. And maybe they didn't even know what they were hating on. I can't say that they did or do, but I can say it is so unfortunate. And of course, I'm sure that our judicial system will deal with them. But I also hope that somehow or another, our mental health system will deal with them and try and help them move from this position of malicious hate or move from this position of just doing something to dislike somebody. I, hey, I don't know what it is, but I do know that we need to understand that violence, hate, vengeance, None of this is the way. That there are all kinds of other ways, other approaches. If you're trying to get at a sense of equality, if you're trying to say, treat me right, provide opportunities, give me hope, there's a better way of doing it. Carla, are you there? Yes, I am. Good evening, Congressman Davis. This is your friend Otis Monroe, sir. Yes, sir. How are you doing? I'm well. Congressman, I need your 
help. The Monroe Foundation is collaborating with the Center for Economic Progress and the Citibank Foundation to bring the mobile tech clinic to the village of Maywood. And we're hosting a launch breakfast on January 21st at the multi-purpose center in the village of Maywood. My problem is I've been calling the ministers in the village of Maywood and other stakeholders to get them to come out to the launch breakfast on the 21st at 10 a.m. to urge their congregants and the community to take advantage of free tax preparation and free filing provided by the Center for Economic Progress on this beautiful van that Citibank Foundation has paid for. And Congressman, I'm sad to report right now, I have almost no response from phone calls, emails, and letters. I need to collaborate with you to make this launch event a success. Ask, have you contacted the... Uh Bishop Porter or Reverend Harrell? I have been in contact with them uh, directly. Uh, uh, I spoke to Bishop Dr. Porter a couple of weeks ago about this, and he has agreed to lend his uh, organizational name to uh, this effort, the launch event, and the two tax dates, which will be February 18th and March 18th, because as you know, Congressman, uh, the IRS has reported that tax refunds will be delayed this year. But while groups are lending their names to it, and Supervisor Mike Corrigan has lent his name to it, um, that's good. But we really need to start generating hard RSVP responses to the launch event on the 21st because Citibank will be out and all of its local leadership, the market president may be out. The van is going to be there to take a tour of. And we really need to make this a success. Hey. Thank you. Let me ask you, uh, yes, did you get me something that's written so that we can help distribute it and Absolutely. join with you in trying to generate the kind of movement and enthusiasm that we need? And I would also put a sense of emergency onto it, that's what I'm looking as for. you may know. I serve on the Ways and Means Committee yes. of the Tax Committee in the House of Representatives. And last year, there were more than 90,000 low-income people in my congressional district who made use of the earned income Credit. Tax credit, right. And right now, there's a great deal of conversation going on by the new administration, mm -hmm. the people who are going to be mostly in charge because they have a majority. Yes. There is talk about seriously changing yes. the income tax credit because there are people who believe that these individuals are getting something for nothing. I'm saying a lot of people don't know how the earned income tax credit works, but obviously there are a lot of people in our district who do. 90,000 people, that's a lot. So let's get the, um, and, and you know, you can talk to me about it tomorrow night, uh, I mean Sunday night, on uh, WRLL 1450, 8 okay. from 10 to 12 with Garfield. We'll be on that station talking, and we can certainly talk about it there. But I want to help you try and make a big push. Yes. They would. And we'd be delighted to help do that now. It's the day after the presidential inauguration, which means I will be in Washington on Friday, which is the 20th. But I'll make it my business to get back here Saturday morning so that I can be there. And we'll be trying to help get people there leading right up to the day. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, and and all right. I'm tomorrow if I can get something, and we get the we'll be on the radio show Sunday night. We can talk about it as much as we want to at that time. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, as you can see, there are still good things going on that are of benefit to our people. You just got to make use of them, and we got to make sure that we use it so that we don't lose it. Carla, are you there? Yes, yes. Good evening, Congressman. Now, How are you doing? Oh, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want from your, from the, deep in your heart, what happened to that young man that got beat up by the four people, do you think that was a hate crime? Now, asking you, well, of course you're going to target them because they're pushed into it. But in your heart, of, do you think that was a hate crime? Yes, I do. Let me tell you. I am not one, well, first of all, I am what I call a practicing Christian. Now, anybody can believe anything they want to believe. Anybody can do anything that they want to do. It's all up to them in terms of what they believe. But I believe that man and woman on this earth, ought to be trying to find ways to do good, to love mercy, and walk humbly with their God. And they ought to be trying to figure out ways to help others rather than to hurt them. And, and since I believe that, and that's my belief, and anybody else can believe anything that they want to believe, but I believe that you should go around spreading good. That if you can find a way to spread good, that is much more effective and much better than spreading evil. So, yes, I do. And I thank you for calling, and I'll take our next caller. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes. Good, good evening, Congressman. I'm calling... I would like to make this statement. Anytime that uh, Chicago is giving out something free, you find a big crowd. Everybody comes. But anytime you want our citizens to participate in something, there is a slack up in it. And I want to say that all the, we have quite a few resources, but we don't use them in our communities. And we don't use the resources in our community. They take our resources and put them in other communities that will use them. This is just ridiculous. I think it is. And I feel that all this, all the empty property, all the empty lots you see up and down Madison, all the different areas, Roosevelt Road and different places, those properties, those lots have already been claimed. I do know for facts that that would be nothing but condos built all up and down there. Well, I I agree whole I want people I would like for people to just stay in their home just and don't run. This is what they want you to do is to run. But use your resources. Then we don't use the resources, then we complain about our park district don't have programs for our children. I da 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 da. But other communities they use their resources all up north. Well, I congressman the things that we should learn to do is how to join together to make the effective use of resources that we do have. I would love to see every family this year have a resolution that we're going to join together as a family and own something if we can't own it by ourselves. And, and, and every time I go to a family reunion, I never miss urging the people to try and figure out a way to do that. Even if they could only kick in 
$10 a month apiece. Say if you got 100 people in your family and everybody can put in $10 a month, pretty soon you have enough money to start something of your own. So true. And, and I wish we could just get that. There have been times that I have wished that I was a business person or that I was doing something else in terms of taking advantage of some of the opportunities. But, you know, I decided to be a politician. I decided to be a public interest individual. And you can't do all things. So I decided if I could try and motivate people, help people, organize people, that that might be more of my calling than establishing the Danny Davis Enterprises. So that's what I've decided to do. But I agree with you 100%, and I'm going to push this concept as much as I can all year, any and everywhere that I go. So Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, you know, we've been on a roll. We got a bunch of callers this evening. Yes. We love it. We love it. And so all of you individuals out there sitting in the warmth of your living room and don't have anything else to do at the moment, go ahead and give us a call. And let us know what's on your mind. I mean, we've got the presidential inauguration coming up on the 20th. We've got President Obama making his last big speech before he goes out of office. And I know we've had lots of people have been calling our office. But there isn't much we can do to help you. Because what they've told us is that People just have to get in line, and the first people who come are the first people who get in, and after that happens. And, of course, they'll have a few tickets, I would imagine, for individuals who, if they had to stand in line, they just won't get there. But I've decided that I'm going to actually stay in Chicago Tuesday, Rather than being in Washington, where we actually will have some votes, I'm going to miss the vote Tuesday because I want to be at this historic leaving. I was there when President Obama, you know, gave his big victory speech, and so I'm going to try my best to be there when he gives his leaving speech and and people are discussing everywhere all over the country I must have done at least three or four interviews today with different media outlets wanting to know what do I think President Obama accomplished did he accomplish anything for the black community did he accomplish anything for Chicago and so you may weigh in on that as well. In your mind, did he accomplish anything for Chicago? Did he accomplish anything for the United States of America? Did he accomplish anything for black America? Is America in better shape now that he is gone? than we were when he came in? All of those are questions that people are going to be talking about. Will there be another African-American or black person elected president of the United States in the next 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years? Does it matter? Does it make a difference? Did it do anything to you? Did it do anything for you? Well, I can tell you I've never felt a greater sense of pride in my life of being black than when Barack Obama became president of the United States.
Paula, are you there? Yes, I am. Please. My name is Orhead. Wait a minute. Um, yeah, my name is Verdi Moorhead. Yes, ma'am. And I uh, wanted to thank you again for uh, arranging for my, me and my couple of friends to go to Washington to have a, a tour of the White House. Oh, okay. It was marvelous. It was wonderful. And we really enjoyed ourselves because that was a um, historical trip for us. And I also wanted to ask you if you had tickets to the Obama event, to the um, the speech that he's doing on Tuesday. It is my understanding that the only way, unless, you know, you're what may be called a dignitary or leader or whatever it is, people use as a, de as a designation, that the only way to really get tickets is just line up and... On Saturday. That's when they're giving them out, Saturday? Yeah, Saturday starting at 8 a.m. in the morning. Okay. That so. understand that that is the only way. Okay. I only got one ticket. <laughs> I get I do have an invitation, but I don't know how I'm gonna get in or where to go to use it or any of that. I think they just well, to just make this a first come, first serve. I wish well, that's some it, other way because it is cold and, yeah, it, and all of that, but uh, breathing cold. That's what I understand. And we've been trying, and and someone said, well, we may be able to make a few tickets available for staffers of some Congress or somebody. And so it might be five. And so everybody in my office want to know if we get those five. <laughs> and I say the only thing I know to do is put everybody's name in a hat and let them pull and whoever yes. is lucky because everybody want to go. Yeah. This is the only time there's been something that everybody in my office want to go. But they don't want to stand out there in the cold the same way everybody else. And so I got to feeling that that's not going to be any way for people to get in except to be in line. Put on one of those fur coats and, and <laughs> you know, something that... But we know how to put layers of clothes on to stay warm because that's what you have to do. But they... they Even at the inauguration, line. let me tell you, I've been out there at the inauguration when it was so cold until all you could do is stand there with your feet shaking and your teeth chattering. And you're saying, oh, Lord, please let them hurry up and get through. <laughs> That's what I was doing even when, 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 when a rock, a river, and a tree, my aunt yep. was doing. I was so cold, I couldn't imagine a river. <laughs> That's what you have to do in order to do it. But thank you, thank you so much. Now, we actually took, when Barack Obama was elected president, we mm -hmm. took 700 people to the inaugural. We sure Oh, my goodness. Took seven busloads of people. Mm -hmm. Two of the buses broke down, one broke down, going, another one coming. But every time I look at the photograph of the group, I'm just, I'm, I'm re-thrilled again. Because I do have a photograph of our group that we took, and it is marvelous. That's right. Time is up. Got to go. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. And hopefully I will see you at the... There. All right. I, I really plan.
plan to go. Okay, God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Folks, next week, we're running over a little bit. We try not to do that. But, hey, have a good week. And go to some of these events if you can. They got long johns and all kind of other stuff that people wear. You can wear it, too. Take care.